Well, I'm here with my good friend Dave Pickerel here in Austin, Texas. How's it's it going, Dave? Yeah, you know, I keep seeing you all over the place. I, 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 we're, we, we, we travel, uh, we travel on a good circle, don't He's we? in a pod. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's. This is a great gathering. I mean, this is one of the biggest ever, right? It's oh, it, this is our, this is our biggest, and it's, it's an absolute awesome deal. We'll uh, talk about the weekend. What have, what have you? Um, great group of people. You know, it's, it's, it's always exciting to. to to come together with a, with a group of like-minded folks in the craft sports world, you know this is where the the nexus of the next awesome deals are. You know the the uh, creativity comes from the craft spirits movement. Um, you can't you can't copy makers. That's not that's not a starting point because you can't you can't beat them on price. So what are you going to say? I, I'm just like makers, and I'm ten bucks more a bottle. Who's going to buy that? So you have to to make your own mark. You got to make your own niche, and so so. And the border to, to innovation here is so low. I mean, there I know guys that are here that have invented a spirit, gotten labels for it, and produced it in three cases. You know, just because they could, and they wanted to see was anybody going to be interested in this. Um, if you're a big guy, if you can't show fifty thousand cases worth of potential sales in year one. You don't get the authority to play, and these guys—that's their their existence—is is based on their ability to play and create cool new things. So, if you want to see what's what's coming down the pike, the best way to do it is to sit in the judging panel and see what people are doing. That's right, and we we judged some whiskeys a few weeks ago, and in all spirits. I mean, I was on the whiskey panel, but I'm really impressed with what is happening. I mean, the, the quality is just is improving. The age of the whiskey, this the whole the whole vibe is just it's well, and, amazing. You know, and you can see, you know, I've been doing craft spirit judging now for a long time. And you know, when I started, you were lucky if you had stuff that was over one year old. Right. And then all this, and then all of a sudden, we're starting to get straight whiskeys, and then we're getting four year old whiskeys, and then we're getting over five year old whiskeys, and then we're getting good gold medal quality whiskeys in wheat, oat, corn, malt, rye, bourbon. You know, and and all of them are rising to the top, and, and it's it's incredible to watch that ground swell and, and to watch as people get better and better and better. And you have to, you've you've been on in, in all aspects of just doing. I mean, obviously, you you've worked for bigger companies like Maker's Mark. You've consulted how many different distilleries? Uh, I've built something on the order of forty-five, and the consultant list is more like eighty. More like eighty, yeah. tons. So you've really seen a lot of different aspects. Oh, yeah. How do you think the uh, craft spirits uh, revolution is is affecting the whole industry, even the big guys? What's it, oh, well, what's it doing? We're we are, we are making the big guys react. Um, you know that that um, you know the craft spirits guys are, are are pushing the envelope in a lot of areas, like um, finished whiskeys. You know the craft guys are the ones who took the lead, and in, in, you know in port finishes and cherry finishes. And, the big guys are being forced to, to bring stuff into the market in those arenas. And the future, what do you what do you see as far as where it's going? Well, I'm, it, we're, there's several things. So, you know, they'll continue to be more and more. You know, a lot of them probably won't get much bigger than, than local to regional. And that's okay because there's enough money to be had to go around there. Um, there will continue to be folks that do get bigger and bigger and bigger, and they get bought by the big guys. And so, you know, the big guys. You know, there's there's um, under the radar guys here that are scouting, you know, and they're scouting two things: what are the cool things that people are doing, and what are the brands that are that are worth looking at to see who I might want to buy. Um, well, I mean, one thing that's I think that's been asked is, and people have asked me, at what point does does it max out? At what, at what point is there? There going to be as many because there's what 700? How many distilleries now? Um, it distilleries depends on. I mean. Depends on who you ask. Right. I mean, there's a lot of people that have their DSP that aren't producing. Right. Um, you know, the number that's producing is who knows, maybe three, four hundred. Um, but um, there is no top. Um, the the fact is, if you go back into the you know into the 1800s, um, I think 1810 there were 2,200 distilleries in the state of Kentucky alone. 2,200. 2,200. In 1810. Um, and uh, so. You know, we won't see that kind of numbers ever. Um, but um, if, if Portland is any indication, there were, the last time I counted, there were there were 24 craft distilleries within 30 miles of city center. Um, 
and uh, that's the most concentrated of, of any place in America right now. And if there's that many there, just multiply it up. There's a lot of states that are just getting into the deal. You know, in New York, where the where the uh, um, where the uh, um, governor and the legislature is getting behind craft spirits, they're popping up like weeds. It's as fast as people can build them um, because they're they've got enough incentive to make it work.